Mother Nature. Weather modification is a growing trend both here in Northern California and around the world. So does it work? And why do some people say it could do more harm than good? HBU Health and Science Editor John Fowler has tonight's special report. So what about making rain? Burt Lancaster's character was based on a real-life Californian who claimed 500 rain-making successes, including a San Diego flood. Charles Hetfield died a half century ago without revealing his secret, but his successors are hard at work here in downtown San Francisco at PG&E headquarters up on the 16th floor, the weather office, where the utility's top weatherman, Byron Marler, studies charts and satellite pictures. Marler's job is to change weather, although he won't say it that way. But we're really not changing the overall picture of the weather in the Sierra Nevada, with the exception of causing a little more snowfall over some of the watersheds. Most of the watersheds of the Sierra Nevada are cloud seeded by some water. Water districts, corporate farms, even private individuals all modify the weather with little oversight and no government restrictions. Consulting meteorologist Jan Null advises cloud seeders to have a lot of people experimenting with the atmosphere with only partially their own sorts of effects are going to come out of it. So, are we messing with Mother Nature? Who plays God with our crops? Who plays God with different areas of the state of California or the counties? In other words, the weather belongs to all of us. Former agriculture scientist Rosalind Peterson of Ukiah spoke to the UN last year opposing weather modification. Although some studies dispute it, she says pulling extra water from clouds in one place steals water from folks downwind. If we're doing a lot here... Peterson says that's sparking weather wars across the western states, expanding rain-making programs that have unknown consequences. She says cloud seeding may be making water problems worse. I think that we could go to conservation. I think we could take other steps of um, better water usage and maybe limit those programs to only a very few, if at all. And what about unintended weather modifications, such as those persistent jet contrails that crisscross our sky? Chemtrail. These are over Mendocino County, where military jets practice. They're blocking some of the sunlight coming in, but they also trap, trap some of the heat. So it turns out as the, what the exact effects are, but those contrails do have an effect upon the weather and climate. And so my friend convinced me to do a hair analysis on my daughter. So we went ahead and cut close to her scalp and got some really recent, recently grown hair and sent it in. I was just sure that my daughter's hair was going to be so clean with the lifestyle that we live. And lo and behold, it came back and her levels were really high in aluminum. This is the chart here. Um, this is the reference range and this is where my daughter is. The highest amount. 23.1. Aluminum, the skies are covered with a white wood, and I look up at night anymore and I don't see the deep, dense stars that I used to, and I can't help but think this obviously has something to do with my daughter's health. I don't know where else the heavy metals are coming from. Yeah, I mean, look, look how old she is. Yeah. She's been isolated here. Here. And she's uh, uh, here. Anybody looking at the situation would be like, this is paradox. This child should be like super organic phone, and here you are getting all this heavy metal stuff. She has the highest level of aluminum on the chart. Never had a vaccine either. Folks, these people are playing God. They are playing God and manipulating the weather, and they're spraying stuff into the sky. They are trying to geoengineer everything, including your plants and trees and your oceans. For tonight, we're just hoping that instead of not looking at it, you start looking into it because I really believe from the bottom of my heart that we are in a real crisis.